Hello, welcome to Yoga with Rachel. Rachel, thank you very much for joining me. We're in our last week of our Pitta Energising practice. Uh, thank you very much for joining me. Do let me know in the comments how you've been getting on with this practice. Uh, once this practice is up, you'll be able to go through the whole of the, the practice. You might pick one or two or three or all of them. Um, so we're actually going to go into the core and a little bit into our back as well. So if you do have them, do grab a couple of the props that you can see behind me. So if you have more of a uh, brick to a block. Um, also, you might not need to use these anyway, so don't worry if you don't have these, but they're nice if you want to go into a little bit more of a restorative practice, if you can be supported with the brick block, or if you have the yoga wheel, and then you can go into a bit more of a supported back bend and go into the shoulders with that one, so you're still in the back bend, but going into a shoulder or heart opener at the same time. And we're actually just going to start seated, so just find a comfortable seated position for you, so you might be like me, legs across. You might have the knees bent, you might have the legs stretched out, whatever feels comfortable for you. And make sure you're sitting up nice and tall. Give the shoulders a few little shrugs. And bring your awareness to your breath, in particular, drawing the breath down into the belly. So we're going to come back into our belly breath and then go into our practice with the core. So gently drawing the belly in, so pulling the belly button in towards the spine and letting the belly relax. Drawing the belly in towards the spine, engaging or activating the core, letting the belly relax. So you can stay here, make sure you're breathing, but you might not synchronise the movement with the breath, or perhaps you're able to synchronise the movement with the breath, and this can take a little bit of practice, so it's fine if you're not there at the moment. So as you're exhaling, so you're releasing the breath, think about you're pulling the belly in, so having to push the breath out. And as you're inhaling, letting the belly relax and expand. Exhale, engaging the core, drop the belly in. Inhale, let the belly relax. Exhale, let the belly engage, pull the belly in. And inhale, let the belly relax. A few more rounds of your own. Exhale, draw the belly button in. Engage the core. Inhale, let the belly relax. Exhale, engage the core. Put the belly in. Inhale, let the belly relax. Do that two more times. As you exhale, engage the core. Put the belly in. Inhale, let the belly relax. Last one. Exhale, engage the core. Inhale, let the belly relax. Keep your awareness with that. We're going to start to find a few different variations of both pose. So, Placing the feet on the mat, knees are bent if they weren't already. So the feet on the mat, knees and feet are hip width apart, and you're sitting up nice and tall. So you want to imagine that you're being pulled up by the crown of your head, so you're not slouching or collapsing or letting the back drop down. Another way to really check in with this is to make sure you're drawing the belly to the thighs. And just placing the hands behind the knees, so the palms of the hands are touching the back of the thighs. Let your shoulders relax, so you're not pulling the shoulders up. And sitting up nice and tall. This might be where you stay if boat pose is challenging, and that's perfectly fine. Or you might be able to lean your shoulders and your head back, so letting your feet lift up without collapsing or rolling back. So the feet just hover, let the arms relax. And you're not holding your legs up with your arms, you're just helping to stay in this nice and neutral place for your lower back. And whenever you're ready, placing the feet down, you can wrap the arms around the legs, tuck the chin to the chest. Have another go, you can stay with this first variation. So as you lean back, make sure you're not collapsing your lower back back, so lift it up nice and tall. Feet can hover or move into baby boat. So you're starting to lift the feet up. Again, check you're not collapsing the back. Make sure there's no tension in the arms and shoulders. And really let your back be your guide. And if you really feel this in your back, so releasing whenever you're ready or in the front of your thighs, move into that belly breath again. So engage the core as you exhale, let the belly relax. Engaging the core, let the belly relax. And do that whilst you're here in your boat pose. So option one, feet stay low. Option two, start to move into your half boat. And maybe it's okay to go into option three, as long as that's fine in your back, so you can reach the arms forward. Whenever you're ready, releasing, rounding the spine, chin to chest. 
Come on back up, stay with the option if it doesn't work for you. You can check in with all of them. Or you might stay with the first one, the second one, you might have a go with the third. Or option four, reach the arms up. So imagine someone's trying to lift you up. Whenever you're ready, when you're, since you don't have to hold these for long, work with your belly breath to really help to get that strength going into your core. So, on your way into your boat, feet low, half boat, reach the arms forward, or you might reach the arms up, or even have a go, start to strengthen the low. You might let you shake it. But whenever you're ready, lower back down. Now for some of us, we need to move. We've actually got two options whilst we're here. So the first one is row your boat. You want to make sure you've got enough room behind you. Just move as much as was comfortable so you can lift back up. So as long as you're happy with the arms reaching forward, the feet can be low or halfway. As you inhale, push your head and shoulders back, push your legs straight. Exhale, engage the core, lift it up. Take the inhale and exhale, or inhale and exhale. Inhale. Exhale, back up. How are we going two more if we can? Exhale, last one, inhale. Exhale, feet on the mat, rounding the spine a little bit, rocking your way side to side. We've got one more variation if you wish to have a go. Work with the one that feels right for you, and then we're going to have a go with our back bends. So we can go into our twists. So again, feet can stay low, but if your feet up, so as you're happy to release the hands. Bring your hands together. Interesting thing is, except for the index finger, so we go into Charlie's Angel Mudra. And we're going to twist, come back to centre, twist, back to centre. So one side, back to centre, over to the other side, back to centre. Twist, centre, twist, centre. One more you can each side, centre, twist, woo, centre, and here we go. So, going into a back bend practice, we can find a way onto our back. I will talk you through a few on the, the belly if you prefer. So, you might turn this into a bit of a Sahaja or spontaneous practice. If you know you want to go into a back bend, then find your way there. Or if you're using brick, find your way onto your back and use the lowest level to start with. And you're supporting underneath the hips, not the lower part of your back. You're pushing into the feet, lift the hips to the tailbone, and just moving the block underneath both parts of the hips. Keep the chin slightly tucked into the chest. And you can stay nice and low on the block so you don't have to lift up any higher. But if it does feel comfortable, you can push into the feet, lift the hips, lift the block up one height and one rotation, and then pressing the hips. Down onto the block. And most of us might go through stage one or stage two. If it does feel comfortable, I know I have to lift the heels up to get that height. And we can find the highest height. Make sure it's not creating any tension. So sometimes this can feel absolutely fine, other times it can feel a bit uncomfortable. And whenever you're ready, you can lower back down through the block. You're more than welcome to stay with the block. Or you might stay on your back without the block. And if you can have to lift and exhale, engage your core, lower back down. And lift, exhale, engage your core, lower back down. Or perhaps you want to work with the block, so we can also the, the wheel. You can actually use the block as well with this one if you don't want to roll completely back. So the first option is to place the block to the other side of the wheel, so it gives it that little bit of sturdiness. And you can lie back, so the wheel is roughly in between the shoulder blades, so it's not by my lower back. Feet are on the mat, knees are bent, and you can have a go with reaching your arms up and finding the wheel. So you can stay upright. Or you can line your head back and just gently pull me onto the wheel. If you want to go into a bit more of a back bend, so a wheel pose variation, lifting back up, you need to move the block out of the way. Make sure you've got plenty of room to roll, so you might need to wriggle forward a bit. So reaching the arms up and over. 
pushes the feet, start to lift your hips, your tailbone, and allow yourself to roll back. And maybe, or eventually, elbows and forearms will find the mat. You can still keep that connection of your shoulders onto the wheel, or starting to lift. Focusing on the breath, listening to your body whenever you're ready. Now back down, push into the feet, use the hands to lift yourself back up and release it. If you want to go more into a belly supportive pose, maybe you're already here, we can have a play with. Six pose, so the elbows are right underneath the shoulders on the mat, as well as the forearms and the palms of the hands, just lifting the chin. You can turn this into a really nice little cat curl, so you can get hand lift the chin, make sure you're not dropping the neck into the shoulders. Exhale, rounding the spine as you lift the belly of the mat. Inhale, lift the chin, belly relaxes. Exhale, round the spine to the chest, belly lifting to engage the core on your hip. Inhale, lift the chin. And exhale, round it. So you might carry on with a few more back bends, but I'm going to leave you here so you can do more to work with if you're on your belly. You can go to Pranam, belly down to Vasana. If you're on your back, you might go to normal Savasana, traditional Savasana. So just finding your way, you can place your hands one on top of the other if you're on your belly, forehead resting on the hands. Or if you're lying on your back, you might be bent, you stretched out. Slight tuck of the chin into the chest, lying on the back of your head. Closing the eyes, bringing your awareness to the breath. And then you might stay here for a little bit longer. If you're on the belly, you might decide to slide the hands underneath the shoulders. So you're lifting back in up into child pose. So taking your time, you know, to your practice, you're welcome to stay open on or Sebastian or child pose if you found your way there. Otherwise, thank you very much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this pitta energizing practice whilst we're in kapha season. Next week, we're moving into a brand new sequence. Um, and I shall talk to you through that as we go into week one. But thank you very much. Look forward to seeing you next week. Namaste.